is video number two. It'll consist of a series of images and text and clips of me putting together and demonstrating the assemblage of the sculpture. I'm not going to try to read everything, um, but I do want to elaborate on what is being said in these images. There are a lot of parts to the project. The first one is the development of the layers. Uh, this includes the surface treatment, um, the, a, const a concept for the imagery that will make up the sculpture, the drawing of it, and color. The frame, which we'll go into first, um, that the frame is literally the structure that supports the sculpture, but it also is the background for it, right? It's the it's, it's, it's a part of the sculpture. It's not just functional. I'm going to talk about the cutting of the layers, like how to take them apart before you put them back together, and then the actual construction. So you do have to know the dimensions of the frame um, that will be the, the, the housing for the, for the sculpture so that you can have the elements to the right scale. This image is the box because that's basically what the frame is going to be disassembled. You'll be constructing this. This is a, um, just a regular piece of cardstock. The dimensions uh, of the paper I used were eight and a half by 11. But as it says, you can scale up or down. You just make sure you uh, are consistent in your measurements. So as I said before, my high school students were using, they did larger two foot by three foot boxes for the frames with a two inch depth. So the riser and the frame edge for their boxes were each one inch. Here, I've scaled down a bit so it's a little bit easier to see because the frame, the outside edge will overlap a bit. It will hide some of the imagery, but because it is a sculpture, people will be able to see inside. So you have to, you know, you will see those things. You are free to change it any way you want to. Um, this is just a template that I'm giving you. Again, though, make sure you measure accurately and use that ruler. So the idea behind the project, um, who is the person? Is it you? Is it someone you know? Is it someone you know of and admire? Um, what have they done? I know this is a bit of a repeat, but you, you need to figure out why, right? What are the things that are associated with them? Are there any objects they might be associated with? Is there certain colors, a place, you know, all those things. And then you want to start sketching out the ideas for the composition. And as I'm, you know, saying here, use those references. I'm going to say this more than once. Use reference imagery, right? One image, don't just try to go from your, your memory. You know, you, you have the tool of the internet, so use it. So Jacques Cousteau, if you haven't heard of him, he's, he's been gone now for a while. But when I was growing up, he was a filmmaker who did the undersea uh, world of Jacques Cousteau. And uh, I was enamored with what he did. And he also was, he invented uh, the the uh, scuba gear. Um, so he's an inventor, a filmmaker, a conservationist trying to preserve the, the ocean. So I'm, I, I decided to go with him. You're going to want to create several thumbnails, um, meaning little sketches, so that you can figure out the composition. You don't want to always go with the first one. I know people don't want to do this. They tend to not do it. But having a variety of different ideas, you can't go wrong. Another person was John Muir. Um, so these were these are actually very small. They're, they're, they're a little bit larger than a postage stamp for the sketches that I did for all these. And Jacques was the one I decided to go with. And the one on the right is the 
final sketch. Well, not final sketch, the final thumbnail that I decided to use. So you want to take one or two of those thumbnails, the one you decide to use, and you can combine them or use just the one of them and develop it further. So you're going to want to create a sketch. Again, I'm highlighting that because it is just a sketch. But you want to do it to the scale of the final piece, which will mean dealing with the uh, surface of the back of the, the box that will be your frame. I ink the larger one. Uh, for two reasons, you're going to come up to the, the next one in a minute. Uh, but the, also, I wanted to make sure you could see easily what you were dealing with when we were talking about this. And then you're going to be tracing out the, the, that, the parts of that image onto a new piece of paper. So this is going to be where I'm tracing out the template. Uh, from the template onto the, the new image, all the parts of that image. So here I'm tracing out the head, and then I'll, I'll do the body, and I'll do the seagulls, and all the other parts that I want to use as separate layers. Um, but I'm going to space them out, okay? So on the left is that original template, and on the right is the parts that I'm going to be constructing from later on. I did this in pencil, right, for quickness because I wanted to, uh, I wanted to do it for this video. Um, as it says, I, I strongly encourage you to use color. If you remember back to the images I showed of the Saints and Retablo, they were very vivid, very vibrant. So you want to make sure that those are standing out. It's a very small piece you're creating. It's, it's really not very, that large. And you want it to still be able to stand out, all the details to be uniquely uh, visible to the viewer. Okay, so again, use those reference images. Um, you're going to see why I was talking about using color. So I'm working out the complexion. You want to do tests. You want to do a lot of tests. You want to commit right away to uh, to the first thing, right? You don't want to put everything right on that finished piece. You want to make sure you know what you're doing with the materials. So it says, you know, cutting out the different parts. Um, the tab, I don't know if you can see this right here, the top of his forehead, I made it larger so it would fit, the hat would fit onto the structure of the head um, because they're not puzzle pieces. They're not, they're not stuck up against each other. They're actually overlapping, okay? And... I didn't like the way it looked, so the image on the left shows the, how the hat was. You know, whether it's redrawing it or cutting it or whatever, um, you can edit. And I chose to make the hat a little bit shorter. Yeah. So, again, like it says down here, and you'll see this in the other video coming up. If I'm going to talk the talk, i got to walk the walk, right? So I redid, and I've done a color version of the same imagery, and I'll be cutting those out in a future video also. So now to start layering. Okay, so once you've established your composition, meaning where everything is going to be in relation to each other, then you will have developed your separate elements. So this is a drawing that is not the finished product. This is the template that I'm going to work off of. I understand the dimensions of where things are going to be in relation to each other and they're going to, how they're going to fit into the frame. And then I established the different elements. Um, again, I drew this in graphite. I would suggest using color, uh, make it as vibrant vivid as possible, really saturate the surfaces so they stand out. It's a small piece, 
and you want it to be able to stand out uh, when people are looking at it, right? All the little details should really push off that surface, both literally and figuratively, okay? So I've, I've got my separate pieces, my separate elements. I understand where they're going to be in relation to each other. Now I have to go in and I have to start cutting things up. So I've created a couple uh, little mock-ups so I can show you the idea of cutting apart the different elements. And understand that um, you're going to be cutting all of this up, right, and layering them on top of each other, right? That's what's going to make the sculpture part of this, okay? Um, so these are, they're not puzzle pieces to be put together. They're, they're layers, all right? And um, I'm going to show you, it's, it's like drawing with a blade. You can use scissors to cut around large areas, long, large sides. But I would suggest using an X-Acto knife, okay? I use an X-Acto knife with a number 11 uh, blade on there, and they're very sharp. So make sure you're careful with these. So you want to make sure you change out the blade every once in a while because you don't want to be trying to tear the paper. You want to be cutting it. Uh, a lot of times people will... Well, they won't have changed out the blade and they'll be trying to cut and trying to cut and the paper is tearing or the drawing ends up getting torn. You know, you want to make sure you have a nice sharp blade. I get quite a few of them. I get a bulk of like a hundred of them from any art supply store. Uh, you probably won't need that many, but it, they're nice to have if you're going to be making artwork. So you want to make sure that uh, you have enough supplies. So... Um, if you haven't used the blade before, become familiar with it. The, the sharp part is along that angled edge. The back is not sharp. To put them in, you unscrew the blade, the, the, the little tip here, and that slides in and out of that little cross section. And then you tighten it up. And I like to tight, hold the blade and twist it to tighten it up. Um, all right. So... Getting into the cuts, when I say it's like drawing with a blade, the only difference is, I mean, you are drawing on that line, but you're not trying to draw all the way around, okay? You're going to have to stop and turn the subject that you're cutting um, and cut from different angles. So to show you that, oh, and you also want to make sure you cut not towards your hand, but away from your hand, right? So... I'm going to start here and cut along the top edge of his hat. And there's pressure being applied to the blade, but I'm not trying to jam through it, right? I'm, I'm just pushing down and letting the blade do all the work. Um, if you need to, you can score, meaning cut through and then cut through again until you get through to the undersurface. So I'm cutting on a cutting mat. It's a rubber surface that uh, works well. It's nice and soft, soft enough to let the blade sink into it slightly. So it cuts nice and evenly through that piece of paper. If you don't have a cutting mat, you can use a piece of cardboard or the back of the, you know, the, the card stock of the back of a sketchbook. Um, just be sure that when you're cutting, you're not going through that under layer onto whatever is below it because you don't want to cut into your family's dining room table, right? So be aware of what you're cutting onto and through, okay? Um, all right, so let's start cutting. I, I already started the hat. Uh, I'm going to work my way down now from this angle. And I'm taking my time, keeping my hand away from the areas. Now I get to this spot. I'm not going to try to cut around. I'm going to pick it up and bring it out onto here and cut down. Just turn this around. Sometimes I forget where I am and I have to recut some things. You might have little 
little tabs that are sticking in the end. You have to make sure you trim off. On the ear. Now I've been cutting papers of different types for a long time, so I'm going pretty quickly. You want to take your time with this, okay? You don't want to go too fast. One, you can make mistakes. Two, worse, you can get hurt. So be careful. All right, now it looks like he's off. Double check some of these spots. Pull this off the surface. Yeah, there's a few sticking edges. So it looks like one right there. Cut that, pull that off there. Okay. I don't like that little spot down there by his glasses. See? So there's the head, and now the figure, the top torso. And see how it's going to overlap? They're going to be overlap like that. So I left more space here. It looks weird, but I left that space on the neck um, so that I could have that overlap, right? I want to make sure that I can cut through um, and have something to be able to glue that down onto. If I didn't have, if I had this end right here on that edge of the neck, right on that edge right there, I wouldn't be able to place, the, I wouldn't be able to glue that neck down. So I'm going to leave that extra tab sticking off the top there. All right, I'm going to cut his body out now. Again, I'm going to go a little quicker than you want to. And make sure you don't have any of your other work beneath it accidentally. That's always terrible. Mistakes do happen. Uh, this is all made out of paper. And thankfully, you know, it's easier to correct mistakes on paper than it is to do with stone, you know. Um, so, you know, don't, don't lose it if you, a mistake is made because you can always redo it. If you did it once, you can do it again and you'll probably do it better. So, work my way through. I can't tell you how many mistakes I've made doing this. Actually, I will at the end. I'll show you. See, I want to do this video well for you so you can get a good idea of what you're supposed to do. And when you make a mistake cutting, or the sound is off, or the lights turn off on you, or a car goes by, blah, 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 uh, you end up having to do more than one time. And I've had to do this a few now. Hopefully this will be the last time. So you saw on the fingers on the other hand, right, if I have to, I'll go through the other side and just cut, make those little tiny cuts around the fingers instead of trying to go around all of them at once. If the paper tries to come up, uh, you can hold it down, but again, make sure you're not cutting towards your hand, you're cutting away from your hand. up here. All right. Let's see. On there. And, and be careful when you're detaching them. You don't want to tear anything, especially when we're working small like this. You want to make sure you're not pulling too hard. It should come right off. Okay. I think everything's set there. All right. So now we have his torso, his 
head. And I'll be attaching those together in a little while, making sure they're in the right place. I'm not going to glue anything together yet. I'm not. I'm just making the parts, just pulling the parts out from the the background. Okay. You don't want to glue anything down until you're certain you have everything just right. Uh, it's hard to make edits uh, if it is adhered to another surface, right? It's hard to get glue apart. So you want to make sure that you have everything where you want it before you glue it together. And just so you see, when I was talking about making mistakes, right? Here's another. This is the one I did prior to this. I noticed you couldn't see it that well, and my audio was bad, and then before that when I was doing this, and again, mistakes are made, but so be it, right? It is what it is, and if I have to do it again, I will, right? That's what we do. All right, so next I'll be showing you how to put different parts together. Uh, and then fitting them into the frame. Okay, I'm going to start cutting all these elements out, and when I'm finished, I will start constructing the layers and how to put them into the frame. I wish I had those sweet uh, video editing skills like Zach King so I could just have it as a drawing and then tap it with my X-Acto and have everything pop off. But as it is, I sat cutting and didn't realize that the app I'm using only uses up 15 minutes of time before it shuts off. So you didn't get to see the entire uh, series of me just sitting here cutting away at things. But I did, they're all separate now, and boom, like that king, there you go. I have all these parts now, and I'm just going to set them down. I'm not going to actually put them together yet as you would for the sculpture, but um, I wanted to set these up so you can take a look at, at least in part of what this might look like. Now, you notice that this is longer than in the original uh, mock-up that I did because he's sitting inside the boat, right? But I wanted to leave enough space for him to actually sit in and have his hand go over the railing. So what I did is I made a little uh, cut in the boat. I don't know if you can see it. I made a little cut so that I could slide him in so that he is actually going to be sitting with his hand on the edge of the rail of the boat. And I'll probably do the same thing with his elbow here. I think I will right now. Now this is all in black and white, you know, because it's graphite, but if you, uh, or shades of gray, I should say. But if you um, do this in color, Little cuts like that won't show up as easily. You have to cut a little further. That's fun too. Again, I'm sorry for the quality of this video. But I know I'll get better. Alright. So there's, uh, there's the body sitting in the boat. 
and before I put his head on, remember he's got, if you look again at that original, he's got his air tank on, which he invented. Um, and I'm going to put those behind him. adjustments. I'm not going to worry about too much. Place the breather apparatus on there. Space that behind him a little bit. On his neck. Okay. And then let's put the seagulls in. This one comes in behind the tank over here. And this one is coming in at his shoulder. Whoop. Rock the boat. <laughs> and his head. He's looking down. And again, I'm just setting these up for you to see them. I'm not actually putting them in place yet, uh, putting them on. But you can see how it's already starting to look like it's going to when you put it in the box, but imagine all of these sitting up separate from each other off that surface. And a little fish. A little buddy. So that kind of gives you an idea of what is going to end up happening uh, with this. Okay. Um, next, what I'm going to do, uh, I also have to do the some of the background stuff, the halo made of dolphins. I don't know if you saw the original. So there's the halo of dolphins that he's going to be surrounded by in the background. Um, I don't think I'm going to be doing those uh, on the background as they're drawn here. I think I'm actually going to end up cutting those out because uh, as one piece, doing the same thing I just did, because I already did the background in color for the box. You know, things things change up. You never know what's going to come your way, so uh, you got to be adaptable. Okay. All right. Moving on. I'm asking you to do the work in color, and yet I was going to present the graphite drawing that I did for expedience, and decided that was no good. So I went back and I did another version. So when I was just talking about making edits and mistakes and having to redo things, lo and behold, I did. So this is going to be the new version and I'm going to cut all these out and I'm going to show you this end product and also the graphite drawing one that I did cut out um, gives you a chance to see two variations of it and then we'll talk about applying the elements to together and putting them into the box okay so now I'm just going to go through and cut these
Okay. Look. I'm sorry. I lied. I didn't mean to lie. I thought it was only going to be two videos. It's going to be three. This is the end of the second one. It's the other part of the uh, assembling of the sculpture is going to be next. Uh, for such a small sculpture, there's a lot of parts. So, you know, I didn't realize it was going to take this long. Um, but in the end, uh, I think you'll, you'll find it was worth it. Okay?